I am going to speak to you today about yet another framework author. You crazy. got mail. Oh shoot. Uh, okay, uh, I guess I somehow I'm getting my email on this presentation computer. What do I have here? Uh, let's see. I got an email message, a comparison. Ah, it's the weekly uh, JavaScript JavaScript weekly. Uh, newsletter. I like to get this thing. It tells me what's happening in the JavaScript world every week. It's just a collection of links. I would recommend checking it out. Let's take a look at this week's uh, email. We've had a concise comparison of JavaScript web frameworks, an 11 part series comparing Aurelia, Ember, Dojo, Vue, React, and Angular reaches uh, the conclusion by looking at the pros and cons of each. Ooh, I guess I better read that because I haven't used every single one of those and I really need to keep up with the industry, right? I should probably read that 11-part blog post. What's next on here? A look at Angular code alongside Vue code. Ooh, yeah, I haven't really considered the, the pros and cons of both of those. I gotta read that. What's next in this email? React spreadsheet grid, an Excel-like React, an Excel-like grid component. Ooh, yeah, I kind of, maybe have a project or two where I could use an embedded Excel thing, but I'm not using React for those. Does that mean I need to learn React so that I can use it for this and use this component? Uh, what else is in this email? I'm getting kind of stressed out. Developing real-time apps with Meteor. Ooh, yeah, I do kind of want to add a real-time thing to my latest project, but I haven't used Meteor. Do I need to learn it for this? I haven't learned that either. Uh, what's next here? Passing data between routes in a Vue.js app. Ah, okay, I'm getting super stressed out. Uh, what do I do? What do I do? Okay, uh, sorry for that interruption. Close my email. Uh, let's get back to the talk. Uh, but you know, come to think of it, this is the .js uh, conference. Anything can happen. So why don't I just scrap the topic and maybe talk about something else that I was just inspired by reading that uh, This Week in JavaScript email. Let's talk about the case against frameworks, uh, speaking as a framework author myself. So much of the time, if you're keeping up with the industry, so to speak, reading uh, websites like Hacker News, Reddit, getting these sort of uh, This Week in JavaScript emails, just checking Twitter, it's like you're on a treadmill, right? You're constantly getting assaulted by the, the latest news about all these frameworks. It's like they're these war planes. And here comes React sweeping in with some latest developments that you definitely need to know about. Oh, and here's Vue.js, and everyone's talking about that now. So, oh, maybe that means I need to learn that too. Do I need to, how do I prioritize this? What, what the heck is going on? I'm gonna go crazy. Have, has anyone seen this excellent blog post from last year? Yeah, make some noise if you did. Okay, yeah. okay, good. Uh, I highly, highly recommend checking this blog post out, even though it's more than a year old, how it feels to learn JavaScript in 2016. If anything, 2017 has gotten worse. Uh, and in case you haven't seen this post, it's a fantastic parody conversation between two web developers where one of them is asking very honest questions like, oh, so how do I do this on a web page? How do I display a div? How do I update it with data? And this, this so-called uh, uh, professional developer who's been keeping up on the industry is saying, oh yeah, you gotta do this framework, you gotta do this, and then you gotta cross compile this, you gotta do Babel on this, and you gotta do this and this. Oh, and don't forget this. Oh, and some parts, uh, yeah, this one kinda isn't cool anymore, so don't use that. And by the end of this blog post, you get this amazing sense of being overwhelmed and stressed at everything you need to know just to do some relatively basic stuff, uh, displaying things on a web page, getting them to, to be interactive. Why is this so complicated? I think there are some simple reasons and there are some more cynical reasons. The simple reasons are we're in a relatively young industry. A lot of uh, standards and best practices are still actively being figured out. Uh, it is inherently a complicated problem of uh, doing the front end code to a web app. 
There's a lot of moving parts. Many, many things can go wrong. And why not let the experts at Facebook or Google tell us what to do, right? Then there's some more cynical reasons. Uh, I like the suggestion by PPK, uh, Peter Paul Koch, longtime JavaScript developer, that uh, front-end programmers have been uh, criticized as being uh, front-end programmers. They're just you know, a bunch of noobs for so long that now front-end programmers are sort of overcompensating by making some super over-engineered stuff just to say, hey, I'm a computer scientist too. Uh, and then there's another cynical reason, which is that companies like Facebook and Google who are promoting these frameworks do have an incentive to get a mind share so that you know, it's, it's better for their companies if people use the technologies that they made. It sort of uh, increases their reputation. Uh, and you know, th these are good reasons, bad reasons. This is, there's no right or wrong answer. Uh, but let's jump into a specific app that I've been working on for uh, just over five years now. It's called SoundSlice, and it is music education software, all web-based. Uh, I don't believe in native apps, if I can avoid it. And the idea is that you learn music better if you can see a video uh, and see the sync music notation at the same time. So you can press play and uh, see, see the notes that are being played. You can do things like highlight on the notation and it'll loop just that section of the audio. And if it's super fast like this, you can slow it down without changing the pitch. Uh, so you can really dig into the tune. Uh, so this is obviously very JavaScript heavy. Uh, another cool thing about it is that the music notation is actually rendered right in the client. And uh, you probably don't know this, but music notation is literally centuries worth of edge cases. It's like in 1820, uh, this publisher in Germany decided to use this particular squiggly mark in this weird musical situation. Uh, so I actually had to implement a music rendering engine in JavaScript. So that lets you do stuff like uh, make the notation uh, changeable <laughs> on the fly. So you can change the, the browser width. It, it's uh, responsive. It, you can up. <laughs> okay, I don't want to just pit my stuff, but I wanted to give you a sense of uh, the kinds of things that I'm doing just to establish some credibility. Uh, so, the <laughs> so this is, this is all JavaScript. You've got mail. Oh, no. Got another email. Who's it from? JS Developer. What does it say? Adrian, I love, love, love Sound Slice. What, jo what JavaScript framework do you use? From JS Developer. Ah, you know what? I get this question all the time whenever I'm at a meetup or something or, or meet someone who's a developer. Ooh, that's cool. What JavaScript framework does this use? Uh, the answer is it doesn't use one. And I'm fine. I'm still alive. I have a happy life. In fact, possibly even happier than... <laughs> so... Uh, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to give you a few reasons why I've gone down this road. Number one, if you haven't seen this site, vanilla-js.com, it's fantastic. It's my favorite JavaScript framework, uh, especially the deployment instructions, which are fantastic. <laughs> to deploy, you actually just delete that line and, and uh, what does it say? This framework is so popular that browsers have been automatically loading it for over a decade. It comes pre-installed in Chrome and Firefox and all these old, old browsers too. Yeah. Uh, but so the, the start of this philosophy for me uh, came about way back in the year 2002. I was living in this uh, small town in the middle of America called Lawrence, Kansas. Uh, to be fair, it's probably the the Paris of Kansas. It's a, it's a reasonably cool town. And I was working as a web developer at a newspaper, and newspapers are very, very fast-paced environments, and my boss would constantly be assigning me programming tasks and web development tasks that needed to be done that day. 
uh, like, oh, this, this breaking news event happened, make a web app, boom, do it in three hours. So sort of out of necessity, uh, me and my colleague Simon Willison started developing some tools that let us do that without uh, you know, wanting to quit and, and go work somewhere else. Uh, and we eventually rolled those into something that we ended up open sourcing. It was called Django. That was open sourced in 2005. That's not JavaScript, but it's Python. It, it's Python, but bear with me. The, it, almost immediately after it was open sourced, we started getting all sorts of requests. Uh, an early one was internationalization and localization. Of course, that makes sense. Uh, it was, some people from Holland and Germany contributed code that would add a whole abstraction layer of internationalization for our framework. And even though we were in the Paris of Kansas, uh, it's, it's not a very cosmopolitan place, so we really had no need for this when we originally made these tools. But of course, the more people that use your thing, the more needs there are, so people want you to expand the scope of your framework. Over the years, people demanded more and more and more and more features. Uh, at the time, some of you who have open source projects of some level of popularity realize that it becomes like a second full-time job, and that was certainly the case for me for about three or four years of my life, constantly responding to tickets and fixing bugs. And over time, if you were to plot the bugs and issues that I actually personally was affected by, uh, you, you would see that going way, way down. And after a few years, I was just fixing bugs and adding features for, for people, fixing bugs that I would never encounter myself and adding features that I would never use myself. So I started, I, I began thinking of, of frameworks as sort of these, these big blobs that had to cater to every single use case. Uh, it's sort of this vicious cycle. The more popular something gets, the more users it has, and therefore the more demand there is for new features. And the more features it gets, the more user it has. So it sort of just keeps on expanding. Uh, I actually like to think of it as what they say about sleeping with someone. When you sleep with someone, you're actually sleeping with everybody else that that person has ever slept with. Uh, when you use a framework, you're, you're taking all of the, the cruft and stuff that other other users have wanted. Oh yeah, there was that one guy in Argentina who, who had this really weird use case for his CMS. And when you download Django, you get that. Hooray? Okay. So after a few years, uh, I decided to step down as one of the BDFLs of Django. Uh, partly for that reason, for, for many reasons, it's a complicated thing, but that really started to color my, my thinking about frameworks and, and general purpose tools like this. So back to the sound slice thing, if I don't use a framework, what do I actually use? And, and the answer is, there's sort of this middle ground. There's a framework. Uh, by the way, many of you have probably heard this definition of what a framework is and how it differs, differs from a library, but just in case you haven't, uh, a library is something that you call from your code, and a framework would be something that calls your code. Uh, so there's something, I think, in the middle, uh, which is just patterns, it's ways of approaching web development. And this, I think, is a, is a world that isn't explored as much as it should be. Uh, there are many sites that tell you about this framework, there are many sites that tell you about this library, but there aren't more general purpose sites that talk about approaches to making a web app, patterns, and sort of first principles. I think that's something that's really missing. Uh, Lately, I've seen several of my friends who are longtime web developers just say, enough with this, screw it. I'm gonna go into an entirely different career path, or even worse, I'm gonna go develop native apps, uh, because at least in native apps, there's a clear story. You just, here's the API, you don't have to worry about uh, analysis paralysis and the paradox of choice and all these different options. Uh, and it's really sad uh, because the, the JavaScript front-end world is so complex, we're, we're really driving people away. And it's not just 
established developers, it's, it's new developers. Uh, if I were starting today, I'd be terrified. I'd, I'd take one look at Hacker News or something and, and say, I, what am I supposed to learn? I, I'd open up that JavaScript email and say, what? A comparison of how many JavaScript frameworks? So how, how deep do I need to dig into all these and what, what do I need to do? So it, it, I think this is a big problem. And part of the answer came to me when I studied with uh, my favorite living guitar player who actually lives here in Paris and I'm gonna get to see him play while I'm here, so that's great. Uh, I was studying with him, Adrian Munyard is his name, and he said, or I was asking him, oh, how do I play like you? Show me that lick, and what's that thing you do over the D minor seven, and what's that thing? And he was nice for the first bit, but then he started saying, you know, it's time to think for yourself. Come up with your own ideas. Uh, do your own thing. You, jazz, improvisational music is, isn't about copying other people, it's about thinking for yourself, and sometimes you may want to copy and learn from other people, but really it's, it's about being yourself. And I really, have, have taken that to heart. I think it's super important to think for yourself. So my main message to you is, isn't to stop using frameworks necessarily. It's to keep an open mind. If you're uh, browsing the, the latest hot JavaScript news, looking at Hacker News, attending a conference where many people are uh, pitching their own frameworks and, and such, don't do resist the urge to, to just feel stressed to learn every single thing. It's totally okay to just use JavaScript. You can do super cool stuff with it, and, um, and, it, and it also scales. Uh, you don't have to worry about frameworks going out of fashion or uh, being unmaintained. It's totally fine. So. Uh, if you think for yourself, two thumbs up. You've got mail. Oh, jeez. What? Oh, I got the same thing? I'm going to unsubscribe. Thank you. Yeah.